A classic El Nino pattern continues across the United States. Let's take a look at the temperature extremes around the world. The world's hot spot over the past 24 hours is Marble Bar, Australia. 116 degrees there. Let's take a look at Street View. And there it is, Marble Bar. Not very good photo quality, but there it is. And the world's cold spot is found up on the Greenland ice cap, minus 70 degrees there at Summit Camp. Doesn't appear that we have a Google Street View image. However, we did luck out with a photosphere image, and that is Summit Camp. The surface analysis for this afternoon does show us in between weather systems once again. Cold front up to the north. This is a reinforcing shot of cold air coming out of Ontario and Quebec. An outgoing system in the Canadian Maritimes, which will be affecting Newfoundland tomorrow night. And we've got this other strong system, another closed low off the California coast, moving inland with a band of heavy showers approaching Santa Barbara and moving into the San Joaquin Valley. Much of the country running above normal on temperatures except for the southeastern U.S. Out here, down to Florida, temperatures about 5 to 10 degrees below normal. But on the other side of this ridge, warm invection, bringing up moisture, warmer temperatures, and even some tropical air down near Corpus Christi and the lower Rio Grande Valley. The upper level charts are the key to the weather patterns. This is at 300 millibars, about 30,000 feet, and this is valid for this evening. We see a split flow pattern here, the northern branch, coming into the British Columbian region through Hudson Bay and out into the Labrador Sea. A southern stream in northwestern Mexico and Texas, and in between this cutoff low off of California. So this is certainly the biggest weather headline for today. And here is a very unusual chart. 10 millibars. This is up at about 100,000 feet. This is higher than the altitude that the SR-71 flew at. And the reason I looked at this was to detect any signs of sudden stratospheric warming. It's not a very common pattern, and usually we don't see that until January or February. And this shows a very normal pattern. This has evidence of a low pressure area well off the chart to the north near Svalbard, Iceland, and a high pressure area across the Aleutians. And that puts this area under northwesterly flow. Typically, when we have a sudden stratospheric warming event, that's associated with an incursion of cold air into maybe North America or Europe, and a reversal of the winds, which produces easterly flow across most of the hemisphere. So we definitely don't have that on this chart. So we return down to the surface, and this is always a good time to look at the thickness chart. So what we've got here is lee side troughing down the front range all the way up into the high plains of Montana and Wyoming. We've got very deep southerly flow all the way from Texas up to Manitoba and Saskatchewan. So this whole area here is running above normal in terms of temperatures. We have a surface ridge across the Appalachians and connecting into this other high pressure area in Ontario. Cold air advection is indicated through coastal areas of the northeast and all the way down towards Florida and then looking out west. Yeah, there's that low pressure area. Let me move the chart. You can see that a little bit better there off the edge. So that is our low pressure area, cutoff low, but it does have a little bit of bare clinicity with it. And I did analyze a occlusion running about like that. I saw very weak evidence of a warm front in the southern San Joaquin Valley, and the rest of it appears to be a cold front extending southward. So this here is the warm sector, maybe extending as far north as Bakersfield and north of Santa Barbara. And then this is a very mild cold sector, and then the main polar air mass is 
locked up in that cutoff low offshore. The northeastern U.S. is dark, so they're in infrared mode, but we're going to run that back. And you can see what it looked like earlier during the day. It is recovering from that last weather system that moved through. Some of the rivers in that region are full. The Susquehanna, the Connecticut River, the Merrimack. So if you're involved in any boating there in the northeastern U.S., you may want to look at some of the bulletins. Gale warnings along the coast from Martha's Vineyard up to Maine. But other than that, much of the northeastern U.S. looking pretty good. And out there off of the Carolinas, you can see the cold air advection. See that cloud field right there? That's suggestive of northerly flow. We get that cold air moving out over the warm Gulf Stream waters, destabilizing, picking up moisture and producing cumuliform clouds, which get larger as they move further to the south. So quite spectacular there. You can see some of that recirculating westward into Florida. So this is all cool air. We do have freeze warnings once again for southeastern Georgia and parts of Florida west of Jacksonville. That includes all of the Waycross area. Temperatures could be down to about 28 to 30 degrees in that region right there. Also, a frost advisory on the west side of Jacksonville to the Lake City area. That's going to be right in here. Temperatures there could be about 30 degrees. And then later in the weekend, we're going to have rain coming in from the west. By Sunday, the Weather Prediction Center does have a slight risk of excessive rainfall right in that area, yeah, all the way up into western Arkansas. So that will be something to watch. In the southern plains, moisture return, warm air advection, moisture heading north, and there could be a low-level jet. Do we have one? Yeah, looks like a modest low-level jet that's going to be for this morning, 12Z, and that's showing 30 knots and even 40 knots up there at Tulsa. So that's going to be the low-level jet. This is 925 millibars, about 2,500 feet. And let's take a look at the 850 chart. Yeah, morning is the best time to look for the low-level jet. Very similar pattern, 30 to 35 knots from Abilene up to Tulsa and holding pretty steady throughout the day, looking at about 30 knots all the way into this evening. Overnight, looks like that remains in place, a little bit of weakening down to about 25 knots, but still pumping that moisture up to the north. And the precipitable water chart does show that moisture heading north. That's going to be the current time this evening. One inch precipitable water up to Waco, College Station, and then by tomorrow morning, surging up into the Oklahoma City area and 1.2 around Houston. Then by tomorrow evening, one inch amounts all the way up to Kansas City. And then by Friday, some of that coming all the way up into Iowa. That's definitely unusual for this time of year. You can see even one and a half along the Texas coast. So we are setting up a pattern which is favorable for rain. We just need the slightest amount of lift to get this stuff going. The north-central U.S. in between the split flow pattern, but plenty of moisture involved and a variety of cloud fields. Even in the lower levels, a little bit of lake effect activity going on there around South Bend. Warm air advection affecting that region, and we're seeing a warming trend going into Christmas. By Christmas Eve, highs will be in the 50s as far north as Minnesota. In the southwestern U.S., looks like a wave making its way through the Four Corners area. So we'll check out the upper level charts. 500 millibar heights and vorticity shows this weak wave this morning around Yuma. And as the day goes on today, there it is moving into the Four Corners area. So that's our little region of lift out ahead of that wave and corresponding to that cloud mass that you saw earlier. Another wave moving across Nebraska and Kansas the vertical motion field will be out ahead of that as well. And let's look at the Q vectors. That solves a lot of the equations for vertical motion. And there it is, kind of a subtle area of lift across Arizona and then spreading into the Four Corners area in New Mexico this evening. You can see the vertical motion field not quite as strong as what we have off California. And then going into the overnight hours, 
some stronger lift develops in West Texas, and that's probably coupling with the warm air advection coming in from the Gulf. And off the California coast, there it is, some well-developed convective elements from Vandenberg Air Force Base northward through the coastal range and south. I did see that there were a few lightning strikes. Yeah, let's get that updated, bring up the lightning strikes. That's going to be the Ghost GLM product. And I can see a few of them here and there. Let's wait for this to populate. Okay, I think they're all loaded. But there it is, a smattering of lightning strikes being detected all down through the San Joaquin Valley and maybe a couple offshore right there south of the, I think that's the Channel Islands. And there's the water vapor imagery. The Weather Prediction Center does have a moderate risk for excessive rainfall around the Santa Barbara Vandenberg area right here. That's going to be today and tomorrow spreading into the Oxnard area. Flood warnings in effect throughout Southern California from San Diego all the way up towards San Luis Obispo. And that covers part of the Southern San Joaquin Valley around Lost Hills and Bakersfield, even down to Palmdale and Victorville. Winter weather advisories for Big Bear and Mount San Jacinto tomorrow night into Saturday for wet snow above 6,500 feet. Could be 1 to 3 inches with higher elevations getting 6 to 12 inches. Wind advisories through the Santa Barbara area up to Bakersfield for winds up to 60 miles an hour and winter storm warnings for the Sierras from Sequoia National Park to Yosemite through tomorrow, elevations above 8,000 feet. So yes, there is quite a bit going on. Let's look at the progression of that on the surface chart. There's that band of rain associated with the warm conveyor belt and going into tonight that's going to spread eastward, start to affect the Sierras. Some snow showing up right there. And then by tomorrow morning, most of the impacts will be in the Los Angeles area. By tomorrow evening, continued effects there around Los Angeles and improving conditions in the northern Californian region. And then as we go into Friday, we're going to see that low start moving inland. You can see the precipitation bands start setting up there in the southwestern deserts. And then by Friday evening, most of the effects will be in Arizona. Any residual precipitation in California will affect progressively lower elevations, possibly down to 6,000 feet by early Saturday. So by the time we go into early Saturday, this weather system crossing the Rockies, moving into New Mexico, there it is. So it's going to be a wet day there in New Mexico. And then we go into Sunday, and that's going to be Christmas Eve. And a Central Plains weather system starting to get set up there. And then overnight, we're going to see a cold front make its way southward. So possibly parts of Texas and parts of the Central U.S. will feel a little bit more like Christmas. All right, so heading back to that surface map, yeah, there's our... Californian weather system, which will be moving that way. And then heading up into Canada, another northern stream weather system moving through Alberta into the Prince George area. You can see the temperatures up there rather warm, up near 40 degrees. And we only find the cold air way up north near the Arctic Circle, minus 20 around Inuvik. And let's see, the coldest temperature that appears to be I'm not sure what that station is. Northern Banks Island, south of Mold Bay, reporting minus 30. So we're starting to get some of that bitterly cold Arctic air, but just not in abundance. Most of the temperatures around Nunavut, Northwest Territories, running about minus 10 to minus 20, which is about typical for this time of year. Alaska, no real problems there. No advisories in effect, except for marine warnings down to the south. And just just snow coming down here and there in the central interior area and the southern coastal range. Out in Canada, no problems there except in the Maritimes. We're going to get this system here affecting Newfoundland, and we do have winter storm warnings around parts of Newfoundland up through the northern peninsula. So here it is coming together. I mean, really, how many, how many channels show you the Maritimes. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, that's going to be a developing area of frontogenesis. That's what we have right now. 
plenty of rain through that region. And then that axis really comes together tomorrow. And down to the south, south of Newfoundland, 996 millibar low coming together. Strong cold air advection on the west side. Plenty of snow wrapping around. And you can see that working to the northeast. And then by Friday, looks like high winds. That could be easily 40 to 50 miles an hour through that area. And gradually the low moves to the northeast, but those winds continue all the way through late Friday. So here's the snowfall as that low passes by. And the GFS does mask the coastal areas. It doesn't want to get too involved in the little details with the land and sea interactions. So you have to look in the interior region to see what's going on. You can see we range from four inches at around the St. John area, well, St. John's way out here, but it goes all the way up to 15 inches across the western part of the island. So that's definitely not going to be a day to be driving on those remote roads. But when it's all said and done, yeah, 15 inches. Let's take a look at the temperature starting out with this map. That's going to be what we have right now, 50s. So some rather sultry air across the island, but that's going to be that frontal transition zone, and the cold air gradually filters in. Teens to lower 20s as that low goes by. So yes, it's going to feel a whole lot different by Saturday. So let's take a look at the weather closer to home and run through that forecast sequence one more time. It's hard to cover everybody's area. There's so many viewers in different parts of the country. But I'll give you the general lowdown, and you can see that System coming in from Southern California, crossing the Rockies. Another little wave moving up from Texas up to Chicago. And most of that precip will remain liquid. The flow of moisture from the Gulf, that's setting up in Southeast Texas starting on Friday. And it will be kind of a wet period coming up here. You can see by Saturday, plenty of rain all the way from Houston, Beaumont, up to North Platte and Cheyenne. And even up near Cheyenne, they're going to be close to a rain-snow transition line. There's the next surge of cold air building, 10, 30 millibar high across the Bitterroots. And that will surge south in the wake of that weather system there in the plains. There it is coming south for Christmas Eve. And then Christmas, which is on Monday, is going to look like this. Not too many people getting snow. In fact, just a huge hunk of rain coming up from Florida all the way to Minnesota. Look at that rain, rain all the way into northern Minnesota. So this is a warm Christmas for sure. The 540 line, which represents some of the colder air coming down into Dodge City, down to about Trinidad. So no snow, but it will be cool through this region here where we have this thermal troughing. All right, so that's what's going to be going on. On Christmas and maybe some snow up there in the higher elevations of the coastal range in Washington but rainy elsewhere then going into Tuesday Boxing Day and the following day Great Lakes weather system cold air in the wake of that and just kind of a very blustery pattern in the northwestern US and there's the remainder of the sequence heading towards New Year's strong downslope flow in the northern plains that's probably a good setup for mountain waves. And little gulf system there around Florida, around 29th or 30th. And that brings us to the end of the sequence. Looks fairly mild in many parts of the country and very typical for a El Nino type year. Okay, and that's going to do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thanks again to Greg for the spectacular aerial footage. Hope you found this program enlightening, informative, and entertaining. We'll see you back here on Friday for another edition. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.